Like just about everyone with a PS5, I spent the last couple of weeks ignoring most of my responsibilities in favor of immersing myself in Spider-Man 2. So much so, I thought this Eagles helmet was the top half of Venom's head while watching Thursday Night Football. Yeah, it became kind of a problem. It doesn't quite live up to the first one in terms of story, which is what I focus on, but it's very solid in the 7 range if I gotta give it a number score. I'll be honest, the entire game I just kept waiting for. Give me rent! You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door! But alas and alack, it never came. Playing the game, it's impossible not to compare it to Spider-Man 3 in your head. Everything in Spider-Man 3 is present in Spider-Man 2 PS5. Peter's behavior being warped by the symbiote, Mary Jane having issues with her career, rising tension between Peter and Harry, even a Sandman plotline. So why is this game so much better than that movie? Well, it's not a complicated answer, and I'm not going to pretend I'm any genius for saying it, but time. It's not news to anyone that Spider-Man 3 tried to cram way too much into just over two hours. That's the beautiful thing about video games as a storytelling medium. My playtime for Spider-Man 2 was 29 hours. Granted, I did platinum the game, but the main story probably did take close to 20 hours. That's 20 hours to introduce and develop Kraven, 20 hours to showcase Harry's need for the symbiote, 20 hours to cover MJ's career struggles, 20 hours to ramp Venom up from harmless lifeline to full-grown genocidal alien, and, most notably, 20 hours to subtly, emphasis on subtly, show Peter succumbing to Venom. Done not only in cutscenes and story quests, but also in his phone calls, musings to himself, and even his takedowns of criminals. When you don't have a time limit, you can do this. Let's go, man, before he gets too far. No. He's mine. Are you sure? He's got big teeth. So do I. Miles was off his game. We almost had Lizard. I'm sure he was just trying to help. Sometimes it's just easier to do things myself. Hey, that's not fair, Pete. We're a team. No wonder your family left you! You're not strong enough! We need to call Oscorp. We need to destroy it. Destroy us? I know you're still in there, Peter. You have to be. I saw your story. I tried to tell you about that. Yeah, but you didn't, did you? I can't lose this job. Your job is to write the truth. I did. The truth is, I'm the hero here, not you. Instead of this. Now dig on this. And honestly, I think there are things they should have spent more time on, particularly Peter reconciling with MJ and Miles and Rio after he gets the suit off, but they didn't hire me, so that's all our loss. After I finished the game, I decided to finally watch Across the Spider-Verse. Look, I'm a busy man, I got there eventually. I didn't know beforehand that, spoiler, it ends with a to-be-continued, which makes it one of two summer blockbusters that ended halfway through their stories. Now, in floating this idea to some friends, this may not be the most popular opinion, but I have 15 subscribers, so screw it, who cares? We need more two-part movies like these. Let me be clear, I don't mean movies that take a story that is barely dense enough to fill a two-hour movie and stretch it out into two movies so they can capitalize off of a fan base with built-in loyalty. I mean movies that are deliberate in fleshing out their characters. Movies that have a dense plot to develop. And not just plain old sequels, but movies that are basically shot as a five-hour continuous story and then chopped in half. Movies written by people who look at video games and realize that the greatest stories told in recent years had the advantage of time and want to utilize it for themselves to bring just as great stories to the big screen. Go to your family. Arthur, get the hell out of here and be a goddamn man. Wars are won by those that are willing to sacrifice everything. If you're done lying to me, then you should stop lying to yourself. 
Everyone I have cared for has either died or left me. Everyone fucking except for you. So don't tell me that I would be safer with someone else because the truth is I would just be more scared. I should have known you'd turn on me, just like all the others. Turn. Turn. I've worshipped you, your mind, your conscience. You are everything I wanted to be! Now, of course, not all movies should do this. The time constraints of the film medium bring out the artistic talents of writers and directors to be as efficient with the limited time they have as possible. But if a story wants to follow multiple plot lines that should require subtlety or a gradual escalation, then studios should be bold in taking the chance to commit to two movies if they really have a story worth telling. I also understand that this concept could be easily bastardized by Hollywood to just milk more dollars out of minimal extra effort, and if this trend actually becomes more common, I may be back in five years saying we need to stop with the two-part movies. All I'm saying now is that the best original stories of our day seem to consistently come out of video games, and filmmakers should aim to leverage those elements that allow for that greatness. And if you think the idea of taking one long, continuous story and breaking it up into multiple releases is a novel one, well, you should check out this franchise. It's a pretty solid example. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be a friend, tell a friend. If you really enjoyed it, you can subscribe to the channel. It'll give me a brief spike in dopamine, and I'll chase that high by trying to bring you more good content. If you really, really enjoyed this video, you can follow me on X. My handle is in the description below. And if you absolutely hated this video, please refer all complaints to Brown Table, and he will inquire why you're even talking about it when Spider-Man is coming out. Spider-Man's about to come out. Spider-Man. Sorry for putting that on your screen. Bye!